Hey everybody, welcome back to Matt Money. So today we're going to do another quick Fidelity tutorial. So a lot of people have been chiming into these Fidelity investment videos and specifically in the comments section they're asking, you know, can you show us how to get dividends? Can you show us how to get dividends? And see where those dividends are kind of coming in. So I think a lot of these comp people are, say, investing in dividend paying stocks and they have no idea where to go to actually see if they're getting paid. And I can understand that. Um, I was the same way when I was first starting to invest, you know, like, you know, anxiously starting to invest and say, where, where are my dividends? Are they coming in or, or whatnot, what have you? And so uh, I will show you in two different ways. So there's obviously the desktop, which I will share with you guys. Um, and then I will also try to screencast utilizing my phone. And hopefully we can show you guys both ways to go ahead and do that. So first you're going to want to log into your Fidelity account. I'm already logged in. Um, it takes me a few seconds to log in because I have to verify with my, my phone and all that jazz. So um, appreciate everybody's patience with that. But hopefully you come up to a screen that looks a lot like this. It's an all account screen. This is kind of the, the different little things that you see in here. You can see I have about 10 different accounts. Some of them are college accounts for my nieces and nephews and stuff like that. So that's why there's a couple of them more than you guys probably even recognize. But I'm not gonna show you guys uh, all the accounts obviously, but what I will show you guys is basically the all accounts view and this will hopefully be able to tap into all your different accounts and, and and that's just for me being able to to save some time hopefully not editing out and and blocking out all the different account numbers and everything like that uh, to maintain some privacy here so Hopefully when you log in, you see something very similar to this. Uh, if you have an individual brokerage account, an individual retirement account with Fidelity. I do know that if you do have like a 401k with Fidelity, sometimes they have like a net benefits sort of thing where it will kind of like load you up to the net benefits, which is strictly 401k. Uh, very rarely, depending on, or at least for my circumstance, am I able to see um, dividends coming into my 401k. Reason being is because it's managed by Goldman Sachs, it's a mutual fund, and generally speaking with those mutual funds, we don't actually get distributions, they just roll it right back in to the fund, and it goes into the net asset value of each individual price. Now, if you're investing in something like ETFs in your 401k, you have a little bit more flexibility, then this is something that you might be able to look into, but, uh, and I, I can also find dividends in my uh, 401k if I'm actually investing in my uh, company, say stock, which uh, obviously the company that I work for um, pays dividends. And so if I were to invest directly into that, I would get dividends from that. But if I were to invest in any of the Goldman Sachs money management funds, I would not. So you guys can see on here uh, all the different accounts that I kind of have within Fidelity. Um, and if you guys aren't seeing something similar to this, you can just go to this upper left with the accounts and trade, click on the portfolio thing, and hopefully it'll bring up uh, something very similar to what you're seeing on the screen right now. It's a whole bunch of different things you can go into, like positions, balances, activities, planning, analysis. But what we actually want to see is the activities. So what has actually been going on in the portfolio over the past couple months? So immediately when you jump in here, there's like three different things. So let's just quickly go over those. It's orders, pending transfers, and history. So orders are anything that you might have open at the moment. So these are like my options that I'm trying to close out or any shares of companies that I kind of have where I want to basically sell them at a higher price. So those are just kind of sitting there and that's where your orders would kind of lie. This is if you're trying to set up a limit order or anything like that. It's going to sit in here until it's executed, and if it does execute, it'll be there for the rest of the day, and then by the time next day comes around, it'll it'll kind of disappear. Uh, pending transfers is anything uh, waiting to be moved in, so let's just say it's taking a couple days to move from, say, your checking account to your individual brokerage account, it'll show up here, so that doesn't really necessarily concern us here. Uh, but what we do want to look at is history. So history is going to show us a whole magnitude of different things. So uh, what you want to do is look, and there's a bunch of different time periods as well. I'm not going to go too deep into it here uh, because you see I do have some uh, options that I've kind of been buying and selling back um, or selling and buying back as well. So 
there's a whole bunch of transactions. This is going to show you literally like everything. If you buy a stock, you'll see it. You sell a stock, you'll see it. You do an option, you'll see it. Uh, so it's basically a culmination of everything that's kind of been in your orders uh, if it's been executed. So it's not going to include all the orders because not sometimes not all orders are executed. But what you would want to do is obviously look for a specific time period of when you're looking for. So that could be over the past 10 days, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. Um, or different quarters if that interests you as well. And then you go into this particular show, meaning what you actually want to look at. Do you want to look at investment activity? Do you want to look at dividends? Do you want to look at when you've added money? Um, if, if you have a debit card, you can see that activity as well. You can see when you're transferring money to and from. And so for us, uh, a lot of people are interested in seeing the dividends and interest coming through. And you can see really quickly, I don't have much, right? But keep in mind that it's limited to the 10 days at the moment. Let's limit it to say the past 90 days. And then you're gonna be able to kind of go in and look at them and see the dividends that you're kind of receiving uh, throughout. And so your account would actually show up here. I'm hiding this just because uh, this actually shows information and what accounts and, and everything coming into where. And uh, don't want to necessarily provide everyone with my account information. So uh, appreciate that uh, you will be seeing something a little bit different. But you can see on the 15th, I got paid a bunch of different dividends. On the 20th, I got paid by Caterpillar. And so this is like how you can kind of come back and look at things. And this is where I come. Uh, Every couple days or every week or so, if I know that I get a dividend, like I know I get a dividend on the 15th every month because I invest in companies that pay monthly and on the 15th. On the 15th, I'll go in, double check uh, based off of using my tracker, if you guys are familiar with that. And I say, okay, yep, this makes sense. Uh, and it's nice to be able to utilize the tracker because it's supposed to be forecasting for you, right? So you should be seeing the 3112 coming into the account unless... If it's different, maybe you forgot to, if you're reinvesting your dividends, maybe you forgot to uh, add how many new shares that you got with the reinvested dividends. So it's nice to be able to kind of like look at things that way and literally just be like, okay, yes, it is 3112. You go into your tracker, you hard code it in instead of it having to be a formula. And then you're, near, you're good to go. You're kind of like, okay, looking. And, and, you know, you don't have to, right? But this is for the folks that maybe want to keep more track of their dividends and, and try to see what they can do to, to grow them or, or what have you. So um, this also will show you guys, because this is kind of cool, your reinvested dividends, right? So if you've reinvested your dividends, it's going to show up here on the negative here because you get paid in a positive. And if you're reinvesting, it comes in as a negative. So look for Realty Income Corp, for example. It's reinvesting that $34 monthly dividend back into realty income. Same with Stag Industrial. Um, it took that $18 payment that I got um, on the 15th and it reinvested it back in. So uh, this is also somewhere you can check to see to make sure if you're reinvesting uh, the dividends. And if you're not and you want to be, uh, check out the other video that I just did a couple days ago and that will help you be able to turn those on. So uh, this is nice, and uh, it's it's a quick way that you can kind of look at things. Um, now what I actually want to do show you as well, because this is kind of important, is how you can kind of see how much you've made really quickly throughout the year. Uh, so keep in mind, uh, I'm not going to show you absolutely everything, but let's just say you want to go into your brokerage and you want to find um, – basically what dividends you've gotten throughout the entirety of the year. So let's just, uh, let's just quickly jump over to my brokerage account. I appreciate it might skip a few frames or so. Okay, so here we are on the, uh, the actual uh, individual brokerage account now. So it's not just all accounts, but it's specifically individual brokerage account. And what I wanna show you guys is how quickly you can look to see kind of how much you made for the entirety of the year. So all you would have to do is kind of look and see and see if you have anything called more or tax info year to date. So this is kind of important to kind of look at and it'll kind of bring up your view for say 2020. You can kind of look at 2019 if you want as well, what sort of taxes you've made. So you can see just quickly here, uh, the total taxable income that I have for 2020 to date is 2300, 2400 coming from this account. Um, so you can see how much I've made, how much I've lost. I've actually sold some things. Um, to invest into other things this year. Uh, so hopefully that'll get offset later in the year. Um, but you can also see how much money I've made uh, based off of option sales as well. Uh, so that's kind of nice. But if you want to dive in a little bit deeper, you can 
come into this part up here and click on specifically ordinary dividends, non-ordinary dividends, so you can kind of see where things are coming from, right? So just keep coming in, keep clicking, and you can kind of see what companies are paying you what, right? Um, and this is nice because uh, it allows you to understand you know, where your dividends are coming from. Maybe you want to look at things from a, a year-end perspective, or maybe you're just curious on an entirety how much you're kind of getting paid in each different company. Um, and you can do that relatively quickly, right? I mean, you can see 148 I've gotten so far from BP for the year. Bank of Nova Scotia has been 162 bucks, two quarterly payments so far. And so it allows you to really just jump in really quick and you can see what's qualified, what's non-qualified dividends. Uh, to see which companies you're going to have to pay a little bit more on um, comparatively to to other companies as well. So, um, so yeah, uh, that's pretty nice to be able to, to kind of look at relatively quickly, and it gives you an idea as to another different way that you can look at what sort of where your dividends are and where they're coming from and, and how you can track them a little bit. So let's actually hop over now to the phone. Hopefully that was good enough for you guys. You can do the same with your Roth IRA. But let's actually hop over to the phone and uh, we'll be able to kind of bring up the, the dividend payments over there as well in the application. All right, guys, so I am now on my phone. So hopefully you can hear me okay. Uh, I'm going to open up the Fidelity app and it's going to activate by looking at my face. So hopefully nothing crazy shows up here. Um, otherwise, I'll have to edit it out. So hopefully it just opens via my face, doesn't show anything crazy. Um, and we can just hop right into the application as well. So um, for instance, this is going to show you guys all the different accounts, right? So uh, your 401ks, all the different accounts that I kind of have open in here. And you can see I'm a little bit down for the day, which is perfectly fine with me. Uh, just had some two really good updates. But let's just do the same thing. We'll go into my individual brokerage account and click on it that way. Um, and once you're actually in, you can see that there's like four big things up here on top. There's summary, positions, balances, activities. Uh, and obviously, similar to what we had done in on the desktop, we want to click on activity again. And it's going to show the same three, four things um, that... Uh, that you kind of have in here. Uh, you can easily just kind of huddle them up and say, okay, well, here's the orders, here's the pending transfers, I shouldn't have any. And you could also say filter, right? So that's, there's just gonna be this little filter over here to the right, it says filter 90 days uh, across from history. So obviously you wanna hit history, that's fine, but uh, you obviously wanna look at filter. And what's gonna happen, this can sometimes trick people, it tricked me for the longest time as well. So hopefully you guys get it. But you can look specifically by the symbol if you want. So if you want to look specifically at Abby, you can do that. But if you click on this past or the time period, past 90 days, you can click on the right-hand side on where the little arrow is. Click on that and choose whether you want it for the past 10 days, 30 days, 60 days, 90 days. Uh, I like to look at 90 days just so I can go back if I'm ever going back to check anything. Um, and you can choose the transaction type. So just like you did for the past 90 days, you wanna hit that little arrow on the right, um, and it'll allow you to select what you kind of want. Uh, because of what we're kind of looking at today, I'm gonna to scroll down a little bit and choose dividend slash interest. But you can also look at like investment activity, um, transfers and, and things like that if you're interested. Now what gets a little bit confusing is there's no like accept or like okay button or anything here. So what we're gonna do is actually look in this upper left hand corner right below the little red clock uh, that shows 4, 7, or 412 right now. And it'll take you back to the filters that you have on here. So let's just take a quick recap of that. The past 90 days is the time period we're looking for and we're looking for dividends and interest. So because of that, now there's a little apply button in the upper right hand corner. Let's go ahead and click that and it'll actually do exactly what we did on the desktop, which is show you the history of the past 90 days of the companies that have either paid you dividends or reinvested those dividends. And so you can kind of go back and click and see, you know, what's going on. You can see I have pretty good amount of dividends coming in. Uh, pretty excited about it. I've been working really hard to be able to get to this point. So um, hopefully you guys can help do that as well. Um, if it's something that meets your kind of investment strategy, I think that dividend investing is a very good strategy. But keep in mind, it's not the only strategy and it might not be the best for you. So uh, while you might like to see some of these dividends coming in, you might be actually hurting yourself. So keep that in mind in that perspective. 
But hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. Uh, I'm hopefully going to be able to edit it really quickly. Uh, for some reason, sometimes, just because I'm not that good, trying to upload iPhone videos for me for some reason has never been easy. Uh, and I lost the trial to my reflector app where I can just like throw it up on the screen. So hopefully in post-processing, this doesn't get screwed up. But if you guys have any other further questions about how to like look at your dividends and stuff like that, uh, please leave a comment in the down in the comment section below. I hope this was easy enough for you. Feel free to replay and watch again if it did go too quickly. Uh, I know that we're probably 10 minutes in and we hit a lot of different buttons and so you could easily get lost and I can understand that. So um, feel free for sure to um, reach out to me uh, if you have any problems. Once again, if you want to join like our WhatsApp group or anything like that, uh, our Facebook group, the, the links are in the description below. Really hope this video finds you guys great and well and hopefully you were able to find where dividends are coming from in my uh, in your Fidelity app. And so if any of you guys are watching this and you're say using Schwab or M1 or anything like that, and you're curious uh, what to do, where, where to go to be able to look at it, uh, feel free to message me. I might make one for M1, I might make one for Robinhood. Some folks said that it's easier to find that uh, in Robinhood and M1, dividends meaning. Uh, so I might not necessarily need to make a video, but I know some folks, some YouTubers that are creating other videos similar to this, uh, for say Schwab and, and stuff like that. And I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. I think that it's great. I want to make sure that everyone watching these videos is getting the value and able to figure out investing for them, right? Because that's the most important part. We're all here to help you guys get to the point where you're able to operate just like we operate here on YouTube. And I'm making this video, you guys can go and show your family members or show your friends or, you know, help, help coach others uh, through the same process, because that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to make sure that everyone can kind of be their own investor and not necessarily have to rely on giving somebody one, two percent of their assets every single year uh, to help manage that. So um, thanks, guys. I really hope this video worked out for you guys. And if it didn't, leave me a comment and maybe we'll set up some one on one time or schedule a, a Q&A or something like that and help you out. So thanks, guys. I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.